Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at diagrams for grouped continuous data, histograms, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what diagrams can we use for grouped continuous data? Consider a set of grouped continuous data. So here we have an example of grouped continuous data, because the mass is given by classes. If you wanted to show the general spread in the data, we could produce a bar chart. So we can have, say, the frequency and the mass in kilograms and give the classes. So have here, 0 is less than or equal to m, which is less than 5. Here we have 5 is less than or equal to m, less than 7. Here we have 7 and 10 as our endpoints. Here we have 10 and 12 as our endpoints. And here we have 12 and 16 as our endpoints. We have a 2 here, as well as a 5 here, we have a 10 here, and all the way up here we have a 12. This is the bar chart corresponding to the data above. However, the class sizes are not the same, so the representation of data in this way may be misleading. If we look at our classes, namely this one, this one, and this one, our first one has size 5, our second one has size 2, and our last one has size 4. Each of these are different class sizes. A way of solving this is by using frequency density instead of frequency, shown on a type of bar chart called a histogram. Let's say you plotted frequency density against the mass in kilograms. This would produce a chart known as a histogram. So what exactly are histograms? Consider a set of group data with unequal intervals, representing the masses of some large rock crystals. Again, here we have grouped data. Histograms can also be used to represent continuously grouped data, where the heights of the bars represent frequency density. So we plot frequency density against, in this case, the mass in kilograms of the rocks, and each of these bar heights represent frequency density. To calculate the height of each bar in a histogram, we use the formula for frequency density. Namely, to find the frequency density, we take the frequency of a class and divide it by the class width. This ensures each bar is standardized. So here we have our same data for mass and frequency, but we can find the class width and then find the frequency density. So we have 5 minus 0, which is 5 for our first class width. Then we have 7 minus 5, which is 2. Then we have 10 minus 7, which is 3. Then 12 minus 10 is 2. And finally, 16 minus 12 is 4. And then, using our formula, we can find the frequency densities. So for the first one, we have our frequency of 2, and we divide by a class width of 5. This gives us 0.4 for our frequency density. Then we have our 2 for our frequency, divided by the 2 for our class width, giving a frequency density of 1. Next, we have 10 over 3, which we'll write as 3.33. Then we have 12 over 2, giving 6. And finally, 5 over 4, giving 1.25. So now we have our frequency densities. We can produce a histogram using the calculated frequency densities. So again we have our frequency densities 0.4, 1, 3.33, 6 and 1.25. And then we can plot the frequency density against the mass in kilograms. So for our first bar we have 0.4, for our second bar we have 1, for our next bar, we have 3.3. For our next bar, we have 6. And for our last bar, we have 1.25. Notice that the class intervals do not have gaps, like bar charts, as we are representing continuous data. So here we have, again, our frequency density plotted against the mass in kilograms. And we have our mass values of 0, 5, 7, 10, 12, and 16. 
and we have our heights of 0.4, 1, 3.33, 6, and 1.25. Notice that between each of the bars, there are no gaps. And this is because our mass is continuous data. The area of each bar is proportional to the frequency in each class because of the setup. So again, if we have our frequency density and our mass in kilograms and the axis values of 0, 5, 7, 10, 12 and 16 and then our heights for the frequency densities of 0.4, 1, 3.33, 6 and 1.25 then we can look, for example, at two different bars and the corresponding areas, say this bar and this bar. Let's say on our diagram, we have a height here of 0.2 centimeters based on how high it is on the actual diagram we observe. And this bar has a width of 0.5 centimeters. And therefore, based on the scale, this bar will have a height of 0.625 centimeters, and this bar will have a width of 0.4 centimeters. So for this bar, we can work out the area by doing the 0.2 times 0.5, and this gives us 0.1 cm squared. And for this bar, we can find the area by doing the 0.625 times 0.4, giving us 0.25 cm squared. In the first case, we have a frequency of 2. In the second case, we have a frequency of 5. If we take our 0.1 cm squared and divide by 0.25 cm squared, we get 0.4, which if we notice is the same as taking the frequency 2 and dividing by the corresponding frequency 5. This 0.4 is a constant factor. And therefore we have that the frequency is proportional to the area. We can work out the frequency for any given interval from its area. So again, let's say we have our frequency density and we have the mass in kilograms and our axis values of 0, 5, 7, 10, 12 and 16. And we have our heights of 0.4, 1, 3.33, 6 and 1.25. Then as an example, in this case, we can assume that one unit in either direction is represented by one centimeter. Therefore, for the masses of 11 to 14 kilograms, as shown in our diagram, we can find the areas separately. Firstly, we have the area between 11 and 12. So we can do our 12 minus 11 multiplied by the height of six. This gives us six centimeters squared. And then we can do the area between 14 and 12 so you have 14 minus 12 multiplied by the height of 1.25, giving us 2.5 cm squared. And therefore the total area is given by the sum, which is 8.5 cm squared. We can draw a frequency polygon by joining the middle of each bar in a histogram, in a similar way to frequency polygons to bar charts. If we plot our frequency density against our mass in kilograms, and we have our axis values of 0, 5, 7, 10, 12, and 16. Then we can take the midpoints of the class intervals, or the bars, and join the lines dot to dot to get a frequency polygon for a histogram. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to consider the table below showing the test scores of 68 students. Here we have our table, and we're asked to draw a histogram to represent these data. Our first step is to recall the formula for frequency density. In order to find the frequency density FD, we have to do the frequency divided by the class width. Our second step is to work out the frequency density for each class interval. So we can find our class width first. 30 minus 0 is 30. 50 minus 30 is 20. 60 minus 50 is 10. 70 minus 60 is 10. And 80 minus 70 is also 10. These are our class widths. And then we can do our 20 for our frequency over our 30 for our class width to give us 0.7 by rounding for our frequency density because we are working to one little place. And then we can have our 18 over 20 giving us 0.9 and then 25 over 10 giving us 2.5. And then we have three over 10 and by rounding we get 0.3. 
And then finally, 2 divided by 10, giving us 0.2. Our third step is to draw the corresponding bars for each class. So we have our frequency densities 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 2.5, 0 0.3, and 0.2. And so we can plot our frequency density against the test scores. We use our classes and have 0, 30, 50, 60, 70, and 80 on the test scores axis. And we can plot our frequency density axis values starting with 0, 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0. And here we have our bars, and all we do is we can put on our individual values of 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 2.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2 for our frequency densities. And this is our histogram. Our second example tells us that a histogram was drawn to represent some temperatures T, taken from an unknown number of days. The 20 to 25 class was 10 centimetres high and 2.5 centimetres wide, representing 100 days. We are asked to find the total number of days from which the data was taken given that the total area under the histogram was 91 centimetres squared. The first step is to calculate the area that is represented by each day, knowing that the area of each bar is proportional to the frequency. So we've been given a class with width 2.5 centimetres and height 10 centimetres. So the area of this bar is the 10 centimetres multiplied by the 2.5 centimetres, giving us 25 centimetres squared. But this represents 100 days, as given in the question. And therefore, doing our 25 over 100, we get 0 0.25 centimetres squared for one day, so per day. Our second step is to work out the total number of days using the total area under the histogram. We have the 91 cm squared is the total area corresponding to the total number of days. Therefore, we can take our 91 cm squared and divide by the 0 0.25 cm squared per day, and this gives us the number of days for the whole histogram. And therefore we get 364 days in total. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.